There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Well, hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads, and I was itching to get outside, but it's raining off and on all day, so here I am, and uh, I have a lot of news. So, let's start with bales. I told you, I promised you I would bail, and I did, just for you. Three bales, all of them new popular books. <laughs> story of my life. Yeah, I didn't get any further. Maybe another page with Fernanda Melchor's Hurricane Season, translated from the Spanish by one of the best translators working today, Sophie Hughes. Even Sophie Hughes couldn't save this. It was just boring. I didn't get to the parts that were disturbing because I fell asleep before I got to the, the gory bits. Real Life by Brandon Taylor. You know, I didn't hate this and I didn't find it pretentious. I found it strangely written, and I don't know where Brandon Taylor gets some of his kind of images or metaphors, because I thought the writing was really bad in many places. You know, a sentence here, a sentence there, it was just like, wh wh what? But really, the point is that Brandon Taylor did a pretty good job of writing about assholes that I hated. And I don't read books about assholes when there's nobody that isn't an asshole. The protagonist was an asshole. I just didn't care about anything, so I, I gave it... I think I read 40% or something, and I just didn't care. It's not a Sean book. Lots of people like it. It's a campus novel. Campus novels read Stoner and one and done. Lots of people enjoyed it. Not me. And this one kind of breaks my heart. This morning on my exercise bike, I bailed on Five Little Indians by Michelle Good, which I started this week. So I started and finished. I read 80 pages. So the first thing to say, and I should have said this about the other two as well, I am probably not the target audience as a white settler Canadian. And if this book speaks to indigenous readers, that makes me very happy. Reading this myself did not make me happy. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was a YA Dickensian knockoff. I, the sentimentality and the characters, it had all the complexity of YA. I, I didn't like it. But it's up for many prizes. My friend Lindy loved it. You're going to hear her talk about it on a video I hope to put up this weekend. Uh, it's got a 4.4 rating on Goodreads. So what the heck do I know? I wish this book and its writer very well. It didn't work for me at all. I couldn't finish. So those were my bales. Ha! Huh. And I finished four, didn't I? Yes, I have. I finished this book of poetry, Indian Coping Mechanisms, Stories from the Field by Billy Ray Belcourt. Belcourt, I told you a couple weeks ago on a Friday Reads that I got a huge crush on him because I watched him in a live event and he was very articulate, soft, gay-voiced, beautiful young man. This collection of poetry was not a success at all. I did finish it. I gave it two stars. Um, it was so clotted with POMO, post-structuralist academic theory that I thought as one particular reader who is not indigenous, who is a settler Canadian, and who is a recovering grad student who had to read all that shit. I thought all of that abstruse theorizing was completely unsuccessfully married to the poetic voice of a young indigenous gay guy struggling with love and sex and identity. Didn't like it at all. Lindy tells me his first collection is much better. He wasn't so didn't have his head so stuck up into the academic theory so I will check that out and I've heard good things about his memoir but this just didn't work for me okay it's too much I, I, I'm always slightly uncomfortable when I have a lot of negativity especially at the beginning of the video so stay tuned everything from here on in is really positive boys and girls 
I finished three books yesterday. One of them was Edmund White's The Unpunished Vice, A Life of Reading, and I loved it. Five stars. Far higher than the average rating for this. I just felt like reading this was having four dinner parties with Edmund White, listening to him talk about what he's read, who he's read, who he knows, uh, uh, talking about his own books. It was an, an absolutely joyful muddle of literary anecdotes and opinions. My TBR is the richer for it. Just a wonderful companion for me over the few months that I read it, here and there and everywhere. Like, uh, oh, I'm going to do a full review, so I'm not going to say any more, but uh, it was fantastic. If you love reading, read this book. I also finally finished this collection of Canadian, Indo-Canadian short stories translated from the gibberish, Seven Stories and One Half Truth by Anash Irani. Anash Irani is the author of The Parcel, which is one of the best novels I've ever read. And this was, I would say, half of the stories were, there were eight stories, half of them were excellent, and the other half were not very good, but I still gave it four stars because of how fantastic the four stories that I loved were. Translated from the gibberish, there's a story at the beginning and a story at the end, and in the fullness of time I'd like to reflect more on that structure, because those two stories, especially the first one, that opens the book was incredibly strong and references made in the translated from the gibberish at the end of the short story collection to a lot of the themes and characters in the stories sandwiched between and I will need some time to reflect on that but like I say about half of them were excellent I think based on this that Anasha Rani is more of a novelist than a short story writer but there was some beautiful writing, quite a few Sunday sentences, and some really great stories here. I would say your first taste of him should be the parcel. And if you love that, give this a try. I'm not going to do a full review of this, but I'm glad I read it. And I also finished this yesterday, The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America by Thomas King. Thomas King, I didn't really realize, was born in California and then moved to Canada in his adulthood. So he's an American-Canadian novelist and writer. This was profound. It's the best nonfiction book I've read in years. Five stars. Uh, such an irreverent, humorous, compelling and accessible history of the indigenous peoples of North America and the politics of it. The, I, I felt so many emotions as I was reading. I learned so much. I underlined the shit out of this book. If you read one book about the indigenous experience, I think it should probably be this one. It's being made into a documentary. I think it's just premiering right now at the Vancouver Film Festival. If you live in BC, you can watch it online. Lindy told me if you live outside of British Columbia, you can't watch it online. But anyway, looking forward to watching the, the documentary at some point. I will be returning to this book a lot, and I yes, I will be doing a full review. So those are what I finished. So in terms of what I started, I started and bailed on Five Little Indians. But the other one that I started, because now autumn has finally come to Tokyo, so I can walk. In the hot summer, I just can't walk. It's impossible, especially wearing a face mask. I can't breathe. I can't walk. It's too hot. The fall has fallen, and I am walking. Instead of taking a bus to the nearest train station, I'm now walking, and that's a good 20 to 30 minute walk many days of the week. So I have picked up an audiobook for the first time in many months, and I fell in love with it in the first few minutes, and I'm still in love with it. And how far? I think I'm about... I'm only 10% in, so it's early days, but it is a gay-themed Trinidadian novel. Brand new, like just in the last few months, I think. Love After Love by Ingrid Purcell, and she narrates the audiobook. She's up there just beneath Trevor Noah in terms of an author-narrated audiobook. It's, she does such a good job even doing the male character because it's too... So far, it's two first-person perspectives of a gay man's and a straight woman's, and she does everything. It's beautiful. So it's set in Trinidad, and there is a youngish widow with her 10 or 12-year-old son. Thankfully, her husband died. He was a prick, and she takes in a lodger, a teacher, who she doesn't know, and we don't necessarily know as the story opens, but very quickly, the reader finds out a gay man, and 
I don't know, I just love it. I love the way she reads it. I love the characters, the way that sexuality is explored, hers and his. It's spicy, and there's something riotous, yet emotionally fulfilling at the same time about the way the story is unfolding, and that's all I can say at the 10% mark. But I am so excited about it that I don't have anywhere to go today, but I'm going to go for a walk just so I can listen to another... 20 or 30 minutes of it. So I bailed on my exercise bike book, and I'm still thinking, well, I want to finish up a whole bunch more stuff before October 1st, when Victober begins. Shouldn't I just pull one of the books off the stack of current reads and read it on the bike? Uh, that just sounds way too practical. I think, I haven't completely decided, but I think I am going to finally start reading a Janet Frame novel. This one I hauled recently. Actually, I don't remember if that haul video has been published or not yet, so you may not know that I recently acquired this. Towards Another Summer. Yes, I think I got comments about it. So yes, I think this video has gone up. It opens with the main character, a native New Zealander, living in England and missing home. I don't know where the story goes from there. I don't need to know. I hope that I like it, because I've been carrying a torch for Janet Frame since I saw the movie based on her life, and I don't remember what's the name of that movie now, but you might. Oh yes, I remember when I, I talked about this when I hauled it. It was written in 1963 and it's so autobiographical. Janet Frame considered it so personal that she didn't allow it to be published when she was alive. An Angel at My Table is maybe the title of her autobiography, I'm not sure, but it, that was the name of the movie that I saw and loved 20, 25 years ago. So finally, I'm gonna get to Janet Frame. The only thing that makes me nervous is, I don't know, I've never liked this font. Do you like this font? Anyway, I'm probably going to get started on that this week. And I didn't get started on this, and I'm just, I'm really completely undecided whether I should add this to the mix when I'm trying to finish up so many other books, but I might. The Loser Thomas Bernhard, translated from the German by Jack Dawson. Um... I kind of want to have a, a book always on the go from the Read More German Books Reading Challenge, but I might wait for this until after Victober. I just don't know. And Joe Smith and I are going to be starting a buddy read on Tuesday. Another Booker nominee, Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. I heard mixed reviews, but the positive reviews and the people who liked it that I usually gel with their taste. I am so excited about it. I'm going to read it slowly for Joe's and my first check-in, just the first 20 pages. But we'll decide after that whether that's not enough to read in a week or too much. And Victober starts, like, next Thursday. My TBR went up a few days ago. You can check it out. I have no idea what I'm... Uh, knowing me, I'm probably going to start most of those books on October 1st and tell you my very, very preliminary impressions thereof on next week's Friday Reads. So next Friday's Friday Reads should be a doozy. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.